Today we're creating a faux neon sign for Halloween. We'll use foam insulation board, EL wire, and paint. All right, let's rock. I wanted to create a neon looking sign inspired by the aesthetics of a popular sci-fi TV series. It was going to be part of a large garage size display but also be able to function independently as a standalone sign by being removable. Essentially EL wire would be glued to a piece of painted foam board with the excess between letters hidden by routing it from hole to hole. To start, I laid out the design at 100% scale in Adobe Illustrator, plan the location of each hole where wire would travel from letter to letter, and number the order from first to last. Now that the sign was planned out, I assembled a gym mat that works well as a portable cutting surface. Next step was to measure and cut the sign out of a larger piece of insulation foam board using a T-square and a utility knife. Then I painted it with the generic exterior satin black paint using a roller nap made for smooth surfaces. After that dried, I put a printout of the sign on the board and marked off with painter's tape which areas had graphics. Then I removed the printout and covered the designated graphic areas with lengths of painter's tape resulting in a large masked off area that I set the printout on top of and taped down to secure. I found a drill bit slightly larger than the gauge of a 3mm EL wire and used that to create holes through the previously numbered locations. Starting with the inside of each letter, I used an X-Acto knife cut through the paper, tape, and shallow surface of the foam board, freehanding the curved lines and using a T-squared to cut the straight ones. Once everything was cut, it was time to remove the printout and peel off the tape by pulling towards the inside of the graphics away from the cut edges until the entire design was revealed as holes within the large tape mask. I used red spray paint for the words that I didn't want to look like neon, peeled away the tape after it was dried, then touched up the chipped areas with an art paint brush using the same black paint as the background. Any black paint that gets onto the red is easily wiped off with a damp cloth. If you want the sign to be more evenly legible during the day when it's not powered on, then you can also paint the inside of the words like I did for demonstration purposes, but that wasn't really the aesthetic I was going for, so I painted over them. But that leaves scribe marks from the X-Acto knife to follow for the EL wire. I fed the EL wire through a hole behind the sign, pulling most of the strand to the front while leaving just enough in back to run to a power source. I was getting antsy to start and didn't wear gloves for the first few minutes, which transferred the red dye and glue to my skin. Needless to say, I put on disposable gloves shortly after, and I preferred the clear rather than black just in case any material got stuck to the wire it wouldn't block the light. The method I found works best for attaching the EO wire is running glue across a section at a time, almost like connect the dots, with straight sections and curved sections considered as separate, even if they were actually continuous, and always stopping and waiting for glue to dry before turning a corner or moving to a new section. After I finished routing wire from letter to letter according to the order in the original plan, I went back and touched up some of the paint that was removed by the glue and wiped off any excess with a damp cloth. Finally, I duct taped the slack of each EO wire strand to the back of the sign with the excess running to the switches, plugged them in, and viewed what I created.
Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please hit the like button. And if you want to catch more cool ideas like this LED cloud wall, please subscribe.